Yo, what's going on guys? And today I wanted to talk about, yes, Trey Young's trade value allegedly below expectation according to Brian Windhorst and Tim McMahon of ESPN. So before we start today's video, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think of, you know, the whole report that his trade value is significantly lower than what the Atlanta Hawks expected? Now, hit that comment section, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and we'll get right into today's video. So, what what is the thing that's going on here? The report is that Trey Young's trade value, according to ESPN's Brian Windhorst and Tim McMahon, isn't as high as the Atlanta Hawks might have hoped. Windhorst points out that this season is crucial for Trey Young, especially with his contract extension eligibility looming. The stress max, as he put it, as he's coming off of the fun max that you get when you play good on your rookie deal, and that this is the new stress max contract, which gives challenges for both the player and the team as significant factors, especially with the new tax apron financial rules. As Young is going to have to have a very good year, arguably a all nba year but not just that a very good all nba season to justify a max deal whether he stays with atlanta or moves us elsewhere as atlanta is in a position to do a quick rebuild and tim mcmahon adds that if there had been a strong market for trey young he would have likely been traded by now similar to how the atlanta hawks traded dejounte murray without receiving a blockbuster return you assume that trey young's value was in the similar ballpark as DeJounte Murray. And DeJounte Murray was on a value on a very affordable contract. The Atlanta Hawks are in a difficult position, needing to rebuild, but are unable to fully commit to it because the San Antonio Spurs hold their draft capital for the you know foreseeable future, leaving them in a limbo where trading Trey Young isn't straightforward. And if you look at the current roster, I personally have always said that to build the perfect team around Trey Young, we saw it that one season when they made it to the conference finals, and it was following the similar blueprint to, yes, obviously to the Warriors. And I know someone's going to be like, well, Steph Curry's 6'4". I understand that. And Trey Young's like 5'11", 6'1", whatever you want to believe he's listed at. They have had the best success when they when Trey Young had Kevin Herter, Danilo Gallinari, Mr. Who, what? Clint Capella. And in that year, they were running outside Danilo. And is it Kevin Herter, Danilo, Bogdan? That was like a tall team, I feel like, the 2020 Hawks. And if you look now, I think Bogdan's still going to be the sixth man. I think their starting lineup is going to be Trey Young, DeAndre Hunter, Zachary Rissache, Jalen Johnson, and Clint Capella. And then you run six man Bogdan. Seventh guy is probably going to be Dyson Daniels, then Larry Nance, and then Onyeka Okongo, who's going to be the nine man rotation. And then you see probably Kobe Bufkin, Cody Zeller, and David Roddy be the guys who figure that out. But the Atlanta Hawks were that season when they did have Mr. They go on that they went on that run, especially in the playoffs. The guys who were playing most of the minutes, little starting. Bogdan, I guess, did start was playing. Uh, John Collins was the power forward. My apology. I don't know why I blanked on John Collins, but they were starting Bogdan at shooting on shooting guard, who's six five. Trey Young at point. They had, and that was because DeAndre Hunter got hurt. They had Clint at center, John Collins at power forward, Hurt at small forward. Bogdan at shooting guard and Trey Young at point. And guess what? It seemed like Kevin Herter was at first coming off the bench before Hunter got hurt. And they had Daniel Gallinari as a six uh, off the bench as well. And they also had, you know, Solomon Hill. So I think if you recreate this, Bogdan starts, Trey's there. You have Zachary and Jalen starting. And I guess DeAndre Hunter comes off the bench. Or you have Zachary come off the bench, and then you have Larry Nance, Onyeko Kongu, and then Dyson Daniels, David Roddy, and Kobe Buff can figure the end out right there. And like that's what I'm saying is like if you were looking to move forward with Trey Young, I think you finally have the size. Cause again, if we just put this image back up there, 6'5 at Bogdan, 
you got like six eight, six nine, and Zachary six nine, and Jalen Johnson. DeAndre Hunter is like six seven, six eight. Larry Nance and Onyeka are both like six ten. Dyson six six. So you got size. David Roddy six six. And there's a Cody Zeller's third string center, fourth. I mean third string point guards Kobe, and then beat Krejcic and David Roddy probably figure out the rest. So you got a, a bigger team. Now, if they were to trade our guy. Trey Young, what would that deal even look like? I first off want to say I wouldn't trade Trey Young because I've always said this. You don't trade players with Trey Young's ability. The fact that you have a guy and Trey Young who for his career, this is Trey Young's career stats. He's a guy who has averaged nine and a half assists, 43.6% from the field, 35.5% from three, 25 point five points per game four rebounds just about a steal game and he actually was better defensively this season and with trey young what do you have is arguably a top five passer in the nba that's a fact by the way trey young's only 25 years old and he's one of the best offensive players in the nba super creative skilled can shoot from anywhere can draw fouls got a good accurate attitude i think and look I just, he's gotten better at moving without the ball. I, and we all know the Lakers allegedly don't have much interest. But realistically, if there was a trade, you're assuming that the Lakers, if they did anything, they would have to trade their, it's it's multiple first round picks. And I just don't think the that's the realistically the team that would do this. In my mind, if there was a team that were to trade for Trey Young, I think... It would have to be a team maybe down the road. I Trey Young, I think the whole future is Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. And if they can bring in basically three team trade or guess what? Quinn Snyder loves. I think at the end of the day, the for example, let's say in a weird way, they, they do some deal like this where you have in like two years, or whatever i don't know what the picks would have to be and what picks they hold but if they can i guess get this i think this is the best case scenario for everybody and oh they can't even trade so that draft pick so i guess that's 28 so let's just do this i don't even know what the picks would have to work out here oh you can't even trade 2030 so they have no control in their draft picks that they can trade so we're just going to look at monetarily this is what you'd assume would have to be it. You would be like, all right, they can, you know, Atlanta loves Kobe and Quinn loves Rudy Gobert and he gets rid of Rudy Gobert for, I mean, gets rid of Trey Young for Rudy Gobert and Timberwolves get Carnty Towns and Onyeka Okongu uh, and Trey Young and Anthony Edwards is their new core. Again, this is like a pipe dream. I just don't think like realistically like, None of these teams are going to trade for him. And is he going to get dumped in Brooklyn? Like, how would that even happen? I just think the whole thing with the draft picks and stuff becomes a hard conversation. When If you're going, obviously, we're going to go to the Spurs because everyone's talked about the Spurs trade. And I don't think the Spurs are that interested. And if the Spurs were interested, let's say it's in a year and you, you have Harrison Barnes contract right there. You're assuming at this point, you're, you got to... Trey Jones would just, let's say he'd be thrown into that deal. Crazy thing about Trey Jones got more money than his brother. And at that point, you're sending out $27 million. I know they can stomach this, but you're assuming that the Hawks would want some sweeteners. Monetarily, I just don't know what would like incentivize. And then you would assume that the picks, you would just give them back Atlanta's. Atlanta would be like, just give us control of our picks. Just give us control of our picks. We saw the Nets do it recently, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them. And let's say this is some pipe dream, bunch of contracts. In this case, you have made Garrison Matthews go over there to, to help them out and maybe throw in Vít Krizic. I also want to take off the the recently signed thing because I know they're gonna like give me this. All right, 
what would this trade that would this work no it doesn't because the spurs would have to cut six million the spurs would still have to cut six million dollars if they did this deal and i i had them send out money so that's wild to think about so the spurs in this case are saying so you would have to you're not giving up that you're looking for a guy that you could add or in this case maybe it's kelvin johnson and you're like all right kelvin johnson and harrison barnes for this big old deal wow the spurs would still have to oh in this case you would just say vitz stay garrison matthews go and then the deal would work boom I still don't like I really think the Spurs are the only one that makes sense if not it's the, the Timberwolves but that's it what do you guys think am I wrong for thinking that it just seems like he's gonna stay on the Hawks unless they can get their picks back I also think the Rudy Gobert deal I said was not great bye